Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for a brief disciples class. Uh, once again, since we can't be together, it's just a quick maybe add on to the little lesson with Griffin that we do Sunday morning. We talk about the same scripture and the same scripture that's in the sermon. So hopefully we're all tying it together and planting little seeds and, and hopefully growing the, the message in our minds a little bit. And so the scripture today is from 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 10. Also in parentheses there is 11 through 20, but we're going to focus more on 1 through 10 um, of the Eli and Samuel story. But first, question hot shots. Where is 1 Samuel in the Bible? Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. But we're going to open in a prayer. God of light, we gather in your presence. We want to walk in your light. We gather to learn how to follow Jesus. We will learn and follow. Amen. Okay, so I want you to take a minute and think of your full name. Where did it come from? Are you named after someone in your family? Um, is it a family name? Like um, my husband is Scott Timothy and Nash is Nash Scott. And Scott's dad is William, Tim, Timothy William. So they take their first name and give that as a middle name for their sons. So we kept that going. Um, let's see, Nash is also kind of named after a basketball player. Could you be named after a famous person? Griffin's named after a basketball player. Not necessarily named after, we just thought they were cool names. Um, Bella is just a pretty name, but her middle name is Grace because my great grandmother was actually Gertrude, but they called her Grace, and that's a very pretty name. And so we kept that tradition alive, but, but kept it at Grace and not Gertrude. Um, I'm Karen Lynn. Lynn is with one N because that was my dad's cousin's name, and that's how she spelled it. And my name is Karen because my dad named me uh, without talking to my mom. <laughs> She had just finished giving birth to me, and my dad just filled out the papers without asking her. Um, so it was either that or Tiffany. I don't know. Being a Karen these days isn't the best, but it's kind of funny. I do love all the memes. Um, so think about your name. And is there a story about why it was selected? And so when we hear today's story, it's about a child who hears their name called in the night. And I'm gonna read that to you right now. So Samuel was a young boy who lived at the temple and helped the priest Eli. A priest led all the worship of God for many people. Kinda of like our pastor. So many troubles were in the land those days, many years before Jesus was born. Remember, this was Old Testament. So Eli, the priest, he was old and his eyes weren't as good as they used to be. And so he was lying down in the temple, and Samuel was lying in another part of the temple, and a voice called, Samuel, Samuel. Thinking Eli needed him, Samuel ran to Eli and said, here I am, heard you call, what you need? And Eli's like, I didn't call you, go back to bed, like, I'm fine. And so Samuel did what Eli said, but then again he heard, Samuel, Samuel. And again he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me, what's going on? No, I didn't call you, said Eli. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. A third time he heard this voice called Samuel. Samuel. And he hurried to Eli and said, Here I am. You did call me. I heard it. But Eli now understood that God was calling Samuel. But Samuel didn't know God's voice. And so Eli said, Samuel, go back and lie down. And when you hear the voice again, you say, Speak, God. I'm listening. And so when Samuel heard the voice again, he did as Eli had told him and answered, Speak, God. I am listening. And then God gave Samuel an important message for Eli. So, as we hear the story, I wonder, why didn't Samuel recognize that God was calling his name? Hmm. Maybe because he'd never heard it before. He had never had that experience. 
Could definitely be. I mean, it could just be because he was like super tired and didn't know what was going on. Like when you hear things and you're coming out of a sleep. I don't know. I wonder about it. So I wonder why you think God didn't just give the message directly to Eli. Like why go through Samuel? Seems like a lot of work. If you know a little bit about the background of the story, Eli didn't have any blood relatives to pass his his faithfulness down to. So it was Samuel. Um, Samuel wasn't just the helper to him because of his eyesight. Samuel was going to start hearing what Eli heard, the messages from God. And so maybe this was just that transition of Eli was getting older, and now it's Samuel's turn to share what God has to say. And so it makes me think about our church and the great things that they do and all of the great programming and causes that we support and how those things will soon be yours to carry on and grow and make better. So that's what I think about when I think about the Eli and Samuel story. But I do wonder how you think God gives messages to people today. And you can think about that. It's a wondering question. Continue to wonder about it. So I have a little like activity challenge, something for you to do this week. Um, So one way we can communicate with God is through prayer. So it's rare that people hear God's voice the way that Samuel did. But today we pray to God and we quietly accept God's message. Because God's answers may not come, like, immediately. Like I've said before, God is not a magic genie here to answer all of your wishes. Um, So one thing that you can do is, I've done this before with a box. You can take a box and little pieces of paper, and you can write your prayers and fold them up and put them in the box. Or you could just write them in a notebook. Um, And what I would do with the little box is every night before I'd go to bed, I'd pull a couple of the papers out. They can be people that I want to pray for, things going on in the world that that need God in them. Um, anything that's on my heart and on my mind. And I pull a couple out and I pray for those each night. You could also put them in a notebook. Each night, whatever's on your mind, whosoever is on your heart, you can write their names down. And you can add more names to your notebook. You can pick a few each day to pray for. Just a way to communicate with God in our own way. Um, so that's a little little challenge for you this week. And uh, before we leave here, let's let's close in prayer, and um, then I will see you next week. So let us pray together. God, you hear our prayers. Keep us ready to hear your answers to them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and I will see you all next week.